going to talk to you something which we are doing uh, of late and uh, uh, which is basically because of two of these people uh, who started this work. Uh, it started with my postdoc who actually uh, uh, was given a challenge to uh, do this area in my group and then this is the part of the thesis of uh, my uh, student uh, Rajaji and uh, I'm going to present you some few examples here uh, as the time permits. Uh, you're going to warn me five minutes before, right? Yeah. So, uh, in, and I should thank uh, um, uh, Pushan for uh, giving me a, a, some introduction for this particular area. We are actually interested in uh, strong uh, spin orbital uh, coupling and uh, uh, this strong spin orbital coupling is related to the uh, atomic number and square uh, fourth power of it. So basically most of the chalcogenides actually satisfy this condition and there's a strong interest and you know for obvious reasons there's a Nobel Prize already won uh, recently for the topological insulators and all of these Dirac semi-metals, of course, uh, Pushin talked about superconductivity, then uh, electronic topological transitions. These are all uh, things which are very much uh, related to this uh, strong spin orbital coupling. So uh, just a quick uh, tutorial on this. Uh, basically, Dirac semi-metals are actually looking at uh, uh, the uh, ele uh, electron densities, uh, which actually follow a, a ballistic uh, equation where it is directly proportional to the velocity and uh, it is uh, it actually, uh, these are the examples for that. And here the electron is a massless uh, particle. Uh, in comparison to the Dirac uh, semi-metal, topological insulators are actually uh, surface states which have a time reversal symmetry, where the uh, surface states actually have conduct uh, conduction and uh, bulk is actually insulating. And if you look at uh, topologic, uh, electronic topological uh, transitions, this can be induced by temperature or pressure. Basically, uh, we are actually looking at the Fermi surface and Fermi, Fermi surface actually introduces certain voids. Uh, there is a change in the voids in these uh, Fermi surfaces. So all of these things are looking at electronic transitions. Now, one of the best way experimentally to determine all, whether it is a, a Dirac semi-metal or electronic uh, topological transition or uh, electronic topological transition or uh, quantum uh, uh, topological insulator is ARPUS, uh, Angle Result Photo Emission Spectroscopy. But those who are experts in this area would actually appreciate that uh, this requires you to do an experiment where your surface has to be very clean and you need to actually do it at uh, a really ultra high vacuum and you need to cleave the sample before we start looking at these uh, uh, photoemission uh, spectroscopy experiments. Uh, these are very difficult when we are actually applying pressure because when we are actually applying pressure, we need a medium around it. And the medium actually is not going to uh, be non-interacting. It may actually interact and can actually cause some surface changes. And that means we are, and uh, till to date, nobody has actually developed a uh, angle resolved photo emission spectroscopy inside in, inside a high pressure cell. So that is the reason why we are actually interested in developing a possible tools which could actually uh, be able to tell you whether we have a, a, to, uh, these, these electronic transitions happening. Now uh, what we uh, what I am proposing here and I am going to show you with my examples is that if you can actually have some of these uh, showing anomalies in uh, uh, across the transition. Basically, uh, tr uh, you measure the resistivity, you measure Raman uh, or Belouin, uh, and also X-ray diffraction, and see uh, whether there are some anomalies in these systems, and there is no structural transition associated with it, then these will be originating from an electronic transition. Now, we are not sure whether these electronic transitions, what kind of electronic transitions they are, but we can actually complement it with theoretical predictions and these systems and then come out with an analogy saying that these are going to have uh, these kinds of transitions. So I'll start with first example where I, I'm looking at a topological transition here. So uh, basically this is titanium telluride, uh, well studied earlier system, but 
uh, recently, uh, there was a theoretical prediction that it can have series of uh, topological phases in this system. And uh, that was interesting. And this is what it means. Basically, if you look at the band structure, you can see that uh, there is a, this is at zero pressure. And as you apply the pressure at around 3 GPA, uh, it actually has a band uh, uh, overlap around A point. And then you have another one around L point, around 8 GPA, and uh, followed with a gamma point in tra uh, uh, transition at around 15 GPA. Subsequently, again, an A transition around 26 GPA. What people understood from the looking at the band uh, overlap, basically there is a parameter which we actually calculate topology uh, parameter, which is the Z2 parameter. If it is uh, 1, it is a topological insulator. And if it is 0, then it is a uh, trivial insulator. And so you can see it goes from a topological insulator to a trivial insulator to a topological insulator and trivial insulator. And according to their calculations, they said there is no phase transition up to about uh, 20 or uh, 40, 50 GPA they have actually done. There is no phase transition. And this, this is an interesting kind of a system which we actually got motivated with. So uh, what we were interested in is uh, we wanted to see whether we can actually see these kinds of uh, transitions. Now the interesting part of this particular system is that if you look at the unit cell, it has a tellurium in uh, uh, basically one, one, one direction. And you have the uh, titanium sitting on the corners of this. And if you actually look at the cell, it is beautifully layered material. And here you should see the tellurium, uh, titaniums are sitting here and the tellurium is surrounding it and it is actually a beautiful layered system. Now, uh, when we started looking at the pressure data, so basically we wanted to confirm there is no structural transition in the system. So we went and did uh, high pressure experiments uh, in synchrotrons and uh, we can see that up to 11 GPA that uh, there is no change, uh, absolutely no change. But all of a sudden, there is an emergence of a new peak. And this actually surprised us, because the calculations say that there is no transition in this system. So when we look at uh, its isostructural system, it's actually iridium telluride is an isostructural system. Basically, they are cadmium iodide type structures. And we go back and look at our literature and then see that, indeed, there is a, a, a new peak arising at around uh, uh, 8 GPA in this case around 7.7 .7 GPA, there is a phase transformation. And that is, this new peak arising uh, is because of the coexistence of two phase. One is uh, the primary phase, and the second one is the monoclinic phase. And this actually uh, told us that, indeed, what we are seeing in our system is also a phase transition happening in this system. So now we wanted to know where exactly does this transition happen. And for this, we actually took the strongest peak that is 101, and then plotted its uh, width and also uh, its uh, 2 theta. And you can see at exactly 8 GPA, we are actually having a deviation. Now, we go and look at the, uh, the structure at uh, 13 GPA. You can actually see the red is uh, uh, due to the primary structure, and the black is because of the uh, monoclinic structure. And you can actually easily see the emergence of two phase. Uh, present in the system. And now, if you go back and plot your equation of state, you can see that indeed there is a, uh, since it's very difficult to uh, decipher at uh, lower pressures, but if you extrapolate uh, this data, you can see that there is a 9.5% uh, uh, change in volume in this system, and you see a phase transition. So the first surprise was that indeed this system is having a phase transition. And that was uh, uh, counter to what the calculations had said. Now, uh, I will not spend time on the why the transition happens, because we have explanations for that. But let us look at what happens below this uh, uh, 8 GPA, because that is where the interest is, because that is where they said that there is a topological transition happening. Now, if you look at the C by A ratio, as uh, Pushin had told, that it is actually kind of an order parameter. You can see that C by A ratio actually has deviations around uh, close to 2 GPA and 4 GPA. This is something very interesting. and uh, we, we actually wanted to check what is happening, because C by A ratio is actually changing in this system. So we went ahead and did the Raman on this. 
So, it is very easy to calculate the Raman modes in this system. Basically, if you actually do the fa factor group analysis, you can see that it has two modes A 1 G and E G mode which are Raman active and A U uh, A 2 U and E U are the I R active modes and this is the depiction of these uh, vibrations associated with it and these are the frequencies associated with it. So, this is very easily calculatable and well, cal uh, uh, well characterized system. So, uh, we went ahead and did the Raman and uh, interestingly we saw three modes. Uh, so, we do get the E G mode which is 105 centimeter inverse and we do get the A 1 G mode 1 144, but there is a very strong peak which is coming around uh, around 125 centimeters. This is again a surprise and uh, we wanted to actually check whether what is existing in the, yeah. Yeah, backscattered measurement. It is a backscatter measurement. So, now when we look at this, we immediately went and looked at the literature and the Raman has been done on uh, titanium telluride before. So, this is basically a series of it, ophnium telluride, zirconium telluride and titanium telluride and you can see that indeed there is uh, a 105 and 144. This is seen in the single crystals which are grown and there are some uh, basically uh, uh, different peaks around that, uh, we will not discuss about that. But interestingly when you exfo exfoliate films, we do see a very interesting behavior that we do not, we are not able to see the 105 peak here because uh, there is a strong peak around 125 and then the 144 is existing and this is in the exfoliated sample. So, this is, uh, that means in the literature we do have a very strong peak around 125. So, we wanted to understand what is exactly happening in the system. When we are doing a high pressure experiment, we take very tiny samples. So, we are actually like exfoliating the layered material. So, whenever you have a layered material and if the layers are actually getting truncated, there is a pseudo periodicity which comes in like in a case of a super, uh, super lattice or something like that, then you have a zone folding effect which comes. And whenever you have a zone folding effect, the zone edge phonons will actually be Raman active at the zone uh, uh, middle and this is basically one of those zone edge, uh, zone edge phonons which has actually folded and due, uh, due to the layered nature of the system that we are actually seeing. So, this is something which we have explained. Indeed, this paper could not explain uh, observation of 124 peak at that time. Now, if you look at the Raman, indeed there is a phase transition which happens around it, new peak coming in. So, there is a phase transition around 8 GPA in Raman also. We do not bother about it, but we are looking at 2 and 4 GPA. So, uh, so whenever you are having an e EG mode and the A 1 G mode, you can do one thing very easily to accentuate the effect. You just do a different spectra. If you do a different spectra, you can see very strong deviations happening around 2 GPA and 4 GPA and of course, this is the transition because of the structural transition. So, along with the C by A ratio, we are actually seeing in Raman, there is a strong effect. Now, immediately you should look at FWHM. FWHM is actually related to lifetime and lifetime is actually a very important characteristic whenever you have an electron phonon interactions which actually gives you a strong effect in the FWHM. In normal sense, if there is no structural transition, the FWHM should be monotonically changing. But here you can see that there is a strong deviation around 2 to 2 and 4 uh, GPA. So, this again uh, told us that there is something happening, there is no structural transition, we have a C by A ratio change, we have a uh, lifetime change around the 2 and G, uh, 4 GPA. So, now we look at uh, resistivity on this system and as soon as we do the resistivity uh, studies transport thanks to Karmaker, uh, we can see that indeed there is a, uh, if you uh, plot the second derivative or the derivative of the resistance with pressure, you can see clearly at 2 and 4 GPA there is a, 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 a change in the resistivity around this uh, point. So, all of this again in this broad peak which is actually a precursor to the transition which happens, you know at around 8 GPA you are actually having a very strong dip in the uh, resistivity and that is where the transition actually happens. So, we are uh, looking at these two and now what have we seen? We have seen a transition, there is no structural transition, but we do have a C by A ratio change and you have uh, basically a tra transition happening 
in the uh, Raman where the lifetime is actually getting affected and also the resistivity actually is get, uh, having a deviation around these behaviors. This clearly says that this is electronic in nature. Now we compare back and look at what exactly the uh, theory has said. So now we can actually conclude that indeed the theory had told that there is going to be a cycling but of course we have a transition around 8 GPA and you know that the pressure cal uh, calculations done by a DFT can be always uh, either over ex uh, exaggerated or less than uh, what it is supposed to happen. So the uh, pressures are not important but we can actually look at it that at around 2 GPA we have a quantum phase transition which is actually because of this theoretical prediction and double band inversion which is basically the z is equal to 0 transition around 80. But before it goes into the next cycle, it actually undergoes a phase transition. And this phase transition I have not explained, but we have actually now a complete understanding that it is because the 2D layer actually is becoming a three, three dimensional structure. And that three dimensional structure that changes the band structure completely. And that is the reason for the phase transition and that is the, uh, what happens. Now, I want to recapitulate what we had told about electronic topological transition. So I wanted to give you an example of topological uh, transition. So basically this is what I am saying that at the Fermi surface you have voids created and these voids are actually going to be uh, due to uh, either pressure or temperature or composition or various other kinds of things which you can do and it can create a topology change around the Fermi surface. Now uh, these are very interesting because uh, we can actually modulate them, but there is a very important factor which happens whenever you have an ETT transition. Whenever you have an ETT transition, you actually can uh, increase the thermal power of the system or thermoelectric effect of the system. Here's an example of it that at room temperature, this is the thermal power of uh, uh, strontium bismuth telluride. And as soon as you apply pressure, it actually jumps by about close to 50 percent in uh, its thermal power. So ETT is a very important factor and uh, we need to actually always look at these systems where there is an ETT transition happening in the system. So we have actually looked at an interesting system from Kanishka who had actually produced this, uh, this is a very good uh, uh, ZT material. It actually can, uh, uh, thermoelectric material which uh, he had actually synthesized. So it is a hexagonal uh, structure which has a band gap around 0.6 EV and uh, it has a very strong uh, spin, on, spin orbital coupling and uh, he actually showed in temperature hexagonal goes to rhombohedral, rhombohedral to disorder phase around 560. The interesting part of it is that it has a ZT of 1.5 uh, uh, which is actually very, very high uh, figure of merit around 700K. So that was the interesting part of this system. But for us, it was interesting because we have a, all these things satisfied and we could actually apply a pressure. And if we can actually cause an ETT in this system, then we can actually talk about how do we actually introduce this at room uh, uh, substitutions that can actually increase this ZT value further. Now this is the uh, primary phase when we start off at ambient conditions. As soon as you apply a very little pressure about 0.7 EV you can see that 103 peak actually disappears and that actually is disappeared here which means there is a phase transition in the system and this is a rhombohedral system. So that phase transition which happens from hexagonal to rhombohedral in temperature is actually mimicked here uh, in the pressure and you can see that basically for a rhombohedral uh, structure minus H plus K plus L uh, is equal to 3 N and that's basically why 103 actually disappears. So it has gone into a, uh, a rhombohedral structure. Now let us look at what happens to the structure. If you look at the C by A ratio, there is no anomaly around uh, up to about 12 GPA. And you can see the equation of state. Equation of state uh, in the rhombohedral structure has no uh, change in volume. So basically it is following a very nice trend. So there is no structural transition in up to 12 GPA. And you can see this is a very good bulk modulus value which we have actually got around 50 gigapascal for this system. Now when you do the resistivity around uh, for this system up to about 12 GPA, uh, you actually see there is a very strong change around 2 uh, gigapascals. That is what we see. And now we actually correlate it with another iso uh, structural system 
which is also rhombohedral in nature, bismuth telluride. And you can see this mimics exactly like what happens in the bismuth telluride. And we have seen under pressure, bismuth telluride actually has an electronic topological transition. So it gave us a hint that there should be a topological transition associated with it. But this is not sufficient. We do not see any change in, yeah, any change in uh, C by A ratio. But we do see a very interesting change in the resistivity. So we go, went ahead and did uh, Raman. And Raman actually says that there are about 10 uh, modes. Most of it happens to be at very low frequencies, but two of them happens to be in the range where we can actually detect about 100 centimeter inverse. And you can see these are the two modes associated with A1G and EG modes, 161 and 171 for this system. Now, these are the vibrational modes. These are the depictions of the vibrations of the system. And if you look at this system, you see in the frequency, there is a phase transition happening. So this actually changes to this. So there is a discontinuity in the system. And this is the rhombohedral phase. And in the rhombohedral phase, up to 8 GPA, we do not see any change in the frequency. But at above 8 GPA, there is a change in the slope. We'll actually discuss this. Now, when you look at the lifetime, when you actually look at the FWHM, then you immediately see a very uh, interesting behavior. Uh, there is a phase transition which happens around uh, 0.7 GPA, but around 2.5 uh, GPA, you actually see a very strong anomaly in the lifetime of the A1G. So there is no change in the frequency, but there is a strong effect on the FWHM. And at around 8 GPA, again, again around 7 uh, GPA, we do see that associated with this, this, there is a change in the slope of this system. So let us look at this uh, carefully. Uh, now, when we do look at the A1G intensity with respect to the EG intensity, we see a very strong decrease happening. And this is an erroneous kind of a behavior. At, and around 7 GPA, we find that there is a minimum actually happening in the system. And basically what it means is that when the inter intensity decreases of the frequency uh, of the strongest mode, which means the skin depth is actually going down, that means it is becoming metal, uh, semiconductor to a metal transition. And now if you do the resistivity measurements around 7 GPA, uh, you can see that indeed there is, a, uh, uh, there is a semiconductor to metal transition happening about 7 GPA. But before that, the 2.5 GPA is actually a, a ETT transition because we see in resistivity there is a change. There is a lifetime change as well as there is no change in the C by A or in the uh, 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 transition in the system. So we wanted to understand why should the resistivity change. So we did the uh, theoretical calculations and that we, uh, we use the density functional theory. And whenever you are looking at transport, if you are actually looking at the uh, second derivative of the system, you will see anomalies around it. So you can see there is anomaly around 2 GPA. Second derivative of the energy would actually show a, a deviation around 2 GPA as well as uh, around 11 GPA, which is overestimated here. But these are the two transitions which are actually seen. By the way, this is actually taken in the only the rhombohedral structure. We have not taken the hexagonal structure and seen the phase transition. So this is basically uh, even reproduced in the electronic transition is indeed happening around 2 GPA, whereas uh, the uh, very strong anomaly is because of the semiconductor metal transition in the system. So uh, with that, I, I actually conclude in this part, basically to say that indeed we do see a, a ETT transition and a metal insulator transition in the system. Now, uh, just in, uh, quickly, uh, I will actually go through the last part. In one minute, I'll show you another example where we were actually interested in a system called uh, antimony sulfide because it is interesting. All of these things are room temperature topological transitions. They crystallize in the rhombohedral, whereas PM and MA uh, structure, they do not show any topological transitions and they are large band gap systems. Here's the table. Here, very interestingly, we see that under pressure, most of these things undergo a ETT transition. So these are actually ETT transitions. But SB2, SC3, there is a controversy which actually says either yes or no. And then we have seen that bismuth sulfide actually shows, even though it is a large band gap material, but it shows a ETT transition around 4 GPA. So we wanted to actually check this, and we wanted to confirm whether what we are saying is correct. Uh, from the Raman and X-ray and uh, 
uh, things. So here is the Raman modes associated with the uh, system and you can uh, when you look at the system you see that around 4 GPA we do see a very strong anomaly in this, uh, in, in this system and lifetime also is a very strongly affected. Now we wanted to look at whether the structure actually has any change around this. It could also be a structural transition. So we went ahead and looked at the, uh, sorry, this is the res uh, resistivity data. Again at 4 GPA there is a strong anomaly which now we look at the structure. In the structure we see that the C by A ratio actually, this is the C and A uh, data and if we plot the C by A ratio there is a uh, dip around 4 GPA. And so 4 GPA there is an anomaly associated with the resistivity. We will not talk about this particular transition, but we will actually talk about this and uh, we look at the Raman, there is a transition happening. So what we have actually concluded here is that indeed SB2, SC3 is also undergoing a 4 GPA uh, uh, topological, uh, electronic topological transition. So basically what I have actually shown you from these three examples is that when we are not able to do the ARPAS and uh, we can actually look at the system, we can actually use uh, resistivity, Raman and X-ray along with the uh, theoretical calculations, we can actually come down and pinpoint that there is an uh, electronic transition and what kind of electronic transition, whether it is a topological transition or whether it is an uh, uh, electronic topological transition, we can actually uh, figure, it, figure this out from this. I would like to thank, acknowledge uh, Electra for uh, all these experiments and I, I think it's a wonderful facility which has been developed by DD uh, along with the uh, Italian uh, people for uh, Indian community. And uh, I would like to uh, thank all my uh, senior collaborators, uh, sorry, uh, all the samples were from Kanishka and Sebastian, uh, ex uh, the resistivity measurements were by uh, Sukanta, uh, and uh, theory was by Kanchana and uh, Pati uh, from my group. And this is, uh, uh, these, uh, this actually has, this is my uh, uh, student's work which I have actually presented. And uh, I thank all 